Welcome to Silicon Valley Successes. On today's show, we have Paul Kalmas. He is the general manager at The Vault, a famous incubator in San Francisco. He is also the founder of the Angel Accelerator, a short-term intensive training course to teach angel investors how to be better investors. We also have Ji Hoon Jong, JJ. He is the senior teaching fellow at Kuyong Hee Cyber University, managing partner of Big Bang Angels, and chief vision officer at Module Labs. He has personally invested in over 40 startups and teaches AI and blockchain technologies to some of the biggest corporations in the world. And you're about to meet them in a moment. Welcome to Silicon Valley Successes. We interview experts and entrepreneurs to give the world access to the knowledge and experience that is here in Silicon Valley. Our mission is to create opportunities for those who seek them and help you to become the next Silicon Valley success. JJ, Paul, welcome to Silicon Valley Successes. <laughs> so both of you have extensive knowledge and experience in the angel investing community. So I just want to start with the questions. JJ Paul, what's the difference you found in angel investing in Korea and Silicon Valley? Paul, would you like to start? Well, there's a lot of angel investors in Silicon Valley, of course, and I guess all throughout the Bay Area. And what we find is that a lot of investors are eager to do it, but a lot of them aren't properly trained in how to do it properly. So there's a lot of following, not a lot of leading. Mm -hmm. um, they also tend to be a little too conservative, and we'd like to see given the richness of opportunities that come along for early stage investors here, we'd like to see people get more, more ambitious, a little bolder, and uh, find opportunities to invest in they might not otherwise have gotten involved with. Interesting, so you're saying some of the investors in Silicon Valley might be a little bit too conservative for the angel community. I am saying that. I think uncertainty, there's a lot of uncertainty involved in early stage ventures, and even experienced investors don't like uncertainty, but they may have some idea how to deal with it. An early, uh, an angel investor or someone who's new to the discipline is going to have even more difficulty. So, we'd like to see people risk reasonable amounts of money, take some chances, learn by doing things differently, and then go on to become better investors over the long term. JJ, have you found that through mm -hmm. your experience in Korea, the conservativeness of angel investors there, or what's your opinion on the? investment ecosystem actually I think that the, the difference between the angel invest with the, uh, the venture capital uh, is huge but the angel invest in the worldwide is may, I think very similar but in in Korea uh, because of the stages uh, angel investors uh, taking care of the startups will be very early stage mm. so that I think the is much more aggressive than uh, you know uh, usual uh, usual investment Mm -hmm. So I think because in, in Korea it's, uh, it's about 10 to 12 years history, uh, so that I think yeah, really after, yeah, yeah, very young. So mm -hmm. so I, actually I think uh, there will be maybe more and more people getting into the conservative, but still I think uh, uh, we have more innovative positions. Huh. So the angel investment community is 10 or 12 years old in Korea. That, that is very young. Yeah, it's very young. When angels look at deals, mm -hmm. how are they vetted? Paul? Well, there's a standard due diligence process that um, most angel networks go through, and they have people who know a great deal about companies go through the, the due diligence process, and then anybody who's expressed an interest in a particular company gets access to that due diligence, which can be a formidable task, you know, legal document, electronic, but still about yay thick. Huh. And so people need to make their way through those and arrive at some conclusion that this risk is worth taking or they could look at a more experienced investor and how that person decides to go on a particular opportunity and follow along. Nothing wrong with that, certainly. When you're saying a due diligence packet like that thick, what are the contents of that? I mean, I'm guessing articles of incorporation, uh, maybe a, a market survey if there's a product market fit, but I mean, what, what's in that packet normally? Well, due diligence is a very detailed look at a company in from all aspects. Hmm. Um, you can you can download free due diligence handbooks. There's one that's over 400 pages long. Is that the Karetsu Forum? That would be the Karetsu Forum one. That's a, it's a great work. It's a great public service to make that available. Um, it's pretty tough going to read through it. It's not the sort of thing you read through like a novel. Yeah. I think one of the problems that due diligence has currently practiced 
with early stage companies is that a lot of the information in there may apply to companies that have a lot more history than startups often have. When you're and saying so history, later stage maybe B yeah, round, got, C round, not D C. Right, or op operationally to have you know years of history and you know, audited financials and product turns and market entry and exits. And I think one thing an early stage investor needs to keep in mind is that due diligence is not necessarily just the numbers or the attributes of a company, but also time spent with the founders, and some gut feel enters into it because there's certain intangibles that a due diligence checklist won't capture, but that may be important to a person's decision process in making an investment. Huh. So that might be interacting with the founders and kind of getting to know them on an individual basis to see if they have that personality that could actually lead a company and grow a company, is that right? That's right, there's nothing like you know, face to face interaction with people to give you a sense of what they're all about. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think a, a checklist of, uh, well, if you look at a due diligence checklist, you'll see how dry it can be. I don't think that conveys the spirit that motivates a lot of, early, of entrepreneurs, especially at the early stage, when they may need guidance uh, or a course correction, and that could be provided by somebody who has relevant experience and a vested interest in seeing the company do better by making an investment at an early stage. Well, JJ, is that similar process in Korea, uh, uh, vetting the companies with due diligence process? Mm -hmm. or? What does that look like? Actually, in Korea, it's still uh, in, in the evolution stages. So there are tons of variety of the, the processes. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, I, I want to correct first because the angel investing history will be, uh, you know, more longer. But the, mm -hmm. uh, about ten or twelve years is a little bit popular after mobile mobile evolutions. Ah. Uh, so that uh, when we start first ten or twelve years, uh, there was that was very uh, you know uh, start of the investment in a small sized company. But mm -hmm. uh, nowadays they evolve like uh, some kind of associations and and uh, you know uh, making some. Uh, Groups like uh, accelerator programs. Okay. So after that, we make uh, some 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 of them is uh, going to the accelerator programs. Uh, for myself, it's Big Bang Angels and Digital Healthcare Partners. They they uh, accelerate the programs, and uh, some some of them is uh, still uh, on the stage of the very uh, seed uh, seed uh, investment. But some of them is also on the you know more connecting with the uh, venture capital uh, society. Huh. So. Uh, during the stages, about the ten years, there are several regulations and some of some of the you know guidelines comes out, uh, so that in Korea I think uh, it's something like evolution stages. Like uh, in Silicon Valley, it was about fifty years kind of things, mm. but this is uh, you know compressed into the ten years kind of things. Okay, <laughs> you can understand the process like that. Interesting. So you, you talked a few things there that I'd like to go back to. Uh, you said that you're the founder of Big Bang Angels. Yeah, Can you yeah. talk a little bit about Big Bang Angels and okay. Okay. your work with other groups? And then, Paul, can you talk about your Angel Accelerator program as well? Okay. So, um, uh, I, I, uh, when I back to Korea, that was the 2007. Mm. Um, I, I was working for many very big companies, and uh, maybe you know the Samsung Electronics or SK Telecom, Hyundai Auto Company kind mm. of things. I was advisor of the com companies. And uh, my salary, uh, the, you know, constant fee was several times for my, you know, salaries. But uh, as you know, in Korean big company doesn't have any interest in investing startup ecosystem at that time, ten years mm. or twelve years ago. So I thought uh, I need to it's a half of my, you know, constant fee into the startup ecosystem. That was the start point. So mm. I, 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 mm -hmm. I know several uh, young, talented people in the NHN or Dam Communication. It's uh, something like a portal. It's Google, like Google in Korea. Okay. And uh, that was the, I just promised them to, if you make some startup, then I invest. Oh. That was, you know, I, I, my history of those uh, investing in the startup companies. So no due diligence. Yeah. You just knew them <laughs> and said, okay, you're my friend. Yeah, that was the type. But <laughs> some of some of my friends also similar things. Uh, some some companies, some companies, mm. some companies they have some positions. And how about we getting together? Mm. And making some, you know, uh, education programs and trainings and kind of things to make make some system. Uh -huh. So that was the start point point of the Big Bang Angels as a, you know, club deals and okay. uh, making things uh, uh, more. Uh, we can we can help uh, promote uh, extending market into the Asian countries kind of things. 
and uh, next step was to something something like a vertical uh, ecosystem huh. so because I'm I have a medical doctor degrees in Korea and also uh, I have a PhD degree in biomedical engineering okay I met some people uh, for the you know healthcare industry mm -hmm. and we founded digital healthcare partners it is uh, solely focused on digital healthcare startup systems huh. uh, it was two or three years ago so uh, that I think that is the, some kind some kind of history of the, my personal history, but it is very well matched with with the Korean angel investor history yeah. because uh, we always the first uh, you know uh, history of the angel investment in Korea. That was interesting. So your group came together, mm -hmm. and based on your net your existing network, mm -hmm. the companies you invested in had all these opportunities and all these introductions. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you were really able to give them a lot more than just money to yeah, help them right, grow. Yeah. So I, we, we always said that the angel investor is not just a financial investor. Angel investor should be something uh, something to be helpful to the startups, so like a, you know marketing or HR or technologies. I mean, there are many sides we can help pull to to the startups. So, that Paul, would you agree on this? Importance. Absolutely. <clears throat> That's basically our thesis: mm -hmm. that somebody with your kind of background understands that the money is necessary but not sufficient. Right. You've got to bring expertise, experience, guidance, judgment, candor. Uh, an MD, PhD like yourself sounds like the perfect candidate to have started Digital mm -hmm. Health Partners. I mean, it's when you have yeah. students that are in your <clears throat> Angel Accelerator class, do you find it? sometimes difficult for them to open up their network to the companies that they want to invest in or do you have to encourage them to do that or do they even know that that's a very big value add for them well let me back up a little bit explain the process then i'll get to that yes um, please. but i think it's really important to focus on the the depth of expertise that you bring to this and you can apply to the company in addition to just the right. money at the earliest stages when it's most important so the Angel Accelerator grew out of a program that we worked with some Norwegians on. They had developed a very successful program in Norway uh, called the Angel Challenge, mm. and that inspired us to, uh, to start something similar over here. The Angel Accelerator is based on the belief that there are not enough angels in this world, no matter where you are, including right here, and that you can learn to be an angel investor through training and through interaction with startups, and that by doing so, you immediately become a better than average angel investor because most mm -hmm. people are not trained and it's a skill like anything else. And so we believe that uh, a program that takes you through the basics of what to look for in an early stage company and then asks you to work with some early stage companies, um, you end up making an investment in those companies after being guided through a due diligence process. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the process, you have a group of investors who are now trained in the basics of angel investing. They also know each other, so they're kind of a kind of a flash mob of a slow motion flash mob of angel investors, um, and they they know these companies really really well. So they can be, uh, in addition to being uh, funders, they can be board members, they can be advisors, they can be corporate right. connectors, mm. they can provide their networks, and I think they'll be more inclined to do so because they know them personally, professionally, and then to, of course, technically and operationally, they've had a really deep dive into what each of those companies does. So it's a very unusual way to go about angel investing, and it's. Let me also say that most people's exposure to angel investing is like watching Shark Tank, which is <laughs> right, right. a great show that has a lot to teach. It's very I mean, entertaining. It's very entertaining. At reality TV notwithstanding, it has a lot to teach. Mm -hmm. And the problem that I take away, that I see emerging from that is that a lot of folks watch it, they think, well, that looks like great fun. I wish I had that kind of money, or I'm no Mark Cuban, but sure, I'd like to invest <laughs> in an early stage company. Again, we believe that anybody willing to put, say, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars on the table and spend a couple of weeks getting educated can be a very effective angel investor mm. and create this community of investors who understand each other's motivations and, and skills and, and characteristics and all that and can apply it properly to a group of startups. And that's the way you build a more effective, more scalable and sustainable um, angel investor, early, sta early stage entity investor system. Interesting. Is that similar what's happening right now in Korea with the yeah, angel sure. community? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, when, when we started as angel investors, there are very few people to have some experience kind of the kind of things. But uh, uh, because of the founders know so how, how to deal with it, so they made their own things mm -hmm. afterward. And then we need to train. But <coughs> because uh, uh, some of the, uh, I if we extend the angel, angel investor networks, there are always some kind of novices and uh, you know uh, who 
do not understand the processor very well. Mm. So we always recruit them uh, uh, as a member. Then we need to we need to teach and educate mm. them uh, for the angel investor properly. Because uh, one of the reasons why the angel investor uh, networks are growing in Korea was that the uh, just Paul said that uh, they can become uh, uh, not just for the investor, but become uh, can become a you know uh, some kind of CTO or mm -hmm. you know marketers uh, in in the startup companies too. So so they nowadays uh, they think uh, this kind of investment is not just for the it's not just for the uh, financial investment, but for for the uh, learning the company together. Uh, in the case we need to uh, educate educate that those people very well. So that's very important. That's great. And for more information, please visit our website, Silicon Valley Successes, our Facebook and LinkedIn, where we keep you up to date on new knowledge throughout the week. And let's go back to our guest right now, JJ Paul. Let's continue that, that what was just mentioned about kind of the community and the interaction. Mm -hmm. How important is it that angel investors and founders actually get along and are able to communicate and work together? Um, there are uh, two types of the interactions. Some, sometimes, um, uh, you know, founders of the startup company doesn't want to, you know, interfere, mm. <laughs> interfere with the uh, invest investors. Uh, in the case, uh, the financial invest investment will be the best. Oh. But uh, some of some of the uh, startups, uh, if there is some room to grow, uh, you know, uh, some uh, with some help help. Uh, from the investors mm. uh, in the case uh, we have very strong uh, li relationship with the uh, uh, startup company so i think there is no single rules but uh, there are uh, there are tons of var variety of the cases mm. but i think uh, the talking together uh, and uh, the <coughs> conversation uh, is very important to how can i help you kind of things and uh, and maybe in six months or uh, one year kind of uh, you know, regular term is very, very important for uh, from the first investment. Mm. Paul, how does a startup decide what money to take from which angel? So, say there's two angels wanting to invest in a company. How does he decide which one to invest or allow to invest in his startup? Well, I'm not sure there's just one answer to that. Mm -hmm. I think um, depending on how desperate they are for the money, they might say, I'll take it from whoever is willing to give me a slightly better term. Assuming the terms are identical, mm -hmm. I think they'd want to you know, probe the uh, uh, investors' and behaviors and habits around how involved are they going to be. The last thing you want is an investor breathing down your neck every week to ask how it's going. By the same token, you want some investors who can add value by the things we mentioned earlier. Uh, on a regular enough basis. And mm -hmm. if they sign up as like a board member or an advisor of some sort, then you know you're going to get them on a regular basis, but not maybe not overly burdensome. So it's a judgment call. It's a gut feel about how well you interact with that person. Mm -hmm. And because once they invest, you're stuck with them, mm -hmm. unless you right. buy them out, I suppose. Ji Hoon, so. do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I think the one, another one is um, the educating uh, startup companies is also very important. Uh, in my experiences, um, uh, most of the successful cases are uh, uh, not just for the market or product, but 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 the people, people from you know startups too. So there are some kind of good match with uh, you know angel investors and and startup founders together. Yeah. So I think uh, we need to educate the people uh, in the angel investors, but also there should be some educations on uh, you know and and some kind of collaboration environment for uh, for the founders and and the investors. I think that, that is very important issues. Okay. And then another quick question. How should angels and VCs interact with each other? What does that relationship look like? Do you, do you want to start? You, JJ, please start. <laughs> okay. Um, Especially if you have any examples in Korea, because yeah, I would guess um, that community would be a lot different than here in Silicon Valley. Yeah. In Korea, because of this is uh, something like a 10 years, 50 years to 10 years kind of things, mm. uh, in angel investors uh, n just uh, covering not only for the angel investing, but also the accelerator programs of pre-seed and pre-A uh, investment. So that uh, there is a, a lot of cases that uh, uh, the exit strategy is related with the uh, Korean uh, startup companies. For example, if, as an investor, uh, we need to make some exit strategies 
But in, in the United States, as you know, the IPO process is very active. And also, you know, big, big companies like Google uh, can yeah. acquire the company very well. But in Korea, IPO process is very strict so that the IPO is not, not a good option for the exit in uh, angel investors. And also, there is nothing like a you know, Google uh, company. So Samsung yeah, doesn't yeah, buy everything? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Samsung is sometimes uh, you know, acquires the company, but the number is not that big. So that one of the uh, very big exit strategies in Korea is uh, uh, when they got the Series B or Series C funding, uh, they buy the stake of the angel investors. So that uh, the, uh, another big difference between the U.S. system in Korea is uh, uh, VC can help helpful to uh, the exit strategies of the angel investors in Korea. In Korea. Okay, so then the exit strategy would be a quicker exit, yeah, probably right. a smaller multiple, but yeah, a right. more um, concrete exit or more likely chance of, yeah. of the exit. But that is not just for the, uh, the Korea because um, uh, we have an alliance with the Asian countries. It is called the Across Asia Alliance. There are several ex uh, accelerators in uh, each Asian countries. Mm. They have very similar problems. So that we now nowadays uh, we are thinking making some networks, making some exchange market for uh, these kind of things would be better. So, a so global angel yeah, community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that will work uh, in, in near future. I think the U.S. system also very good uh, for this kind of consortium kind of things because of a lot of good uh, companies comes from the worldwide countries mm. and also we can make a uh, more bigger market uh, in the for the for the angel investors that start up together great and then in the valley what's the interaction you find between the angels angel groups and VCs well I'm not I'm not really up on who's talking to whom, but I'm guessing that all the VCs know all the active angel investors, mm -hmm. both the networks and the individuals. And I think it would make it makes great sense because if an angel investor is uncertain about what the outcome might be, if they knew that uh, VCs who have a tendency to invest in those kind of companies was keeping an eye on what they were doing, they might be much more inclined to invest because they see a more likelihood of an exit acquisition or uh, investment by a VC down the road. So I think there's a natural complement between angel investing hopes and dreams of getting an exit, mm. and the VCs who let others take the earlier risk to grow these companies and maybe have some input into what they'd like to see in order to make them more attractive for an A, B, or C round right. down the road. What about what JJ had mentioned in Korea, IPO and getting acquired by a big company is not really that big of an option because of the difficulty and how few huge corporations there are. Do you find that a lot of angels here are hoping and praying that their exit is really that IPO or that being acquired by Google? I think most folks know that IPOs are still somewhat rare here and that we do get founders at the vault on occasion who say we're, we're definitely going for IPO. Mm. Like, okay, well, you might. We're happy to, to track that progress as you go. <laughs> but I think most angels are happy for any exit that gives them a positive return. Of course, they want it to be as big as possible. Mm. But the nature of angel investing is not put all your eggs in one basket. You know, maybe place a, place a dozen bets if you have the appetite for it <clears throat> and hope that some of them get acquired hope that some of them in a follow-on round, maybe they buy out the earlier stakes mm. um, to clear up the cap table. I think there's a lot of ways company that investors hope for an exit, but I think the most important thing is the company's around long enough to actually have some kind of exit or follow-on funding. Huh. It's really important to focus on the basics of running these startups as businesses so that there actually is time for them to achieve some kind of outcome. And then how should angels interact with incubators and accelerators? Should they just be standoff and not visit, or should they really try to mingle, maybe mentor there? What should the what should that relationship look like? I well, think it should be a lot more active than it is. You know, we've all been to pitch events where you have an audience full of potential investors, and you get a few startups on stage for two, three, five minutes, and that's all well and good, and it's well understood, I suppose, and reasonably well established as the way things work. But frankly, I think that's too few companies seen by too many investors. I think what we should do is rent some vans and load the interested angels into them and go around to the different incubators and accelerators. You know, come to the vault, go to Skydeck, uh, go down to plug and play and see what's mm -hmm. going on. So that you're bringing groups of investors to the, you know, the natural environment these startups inhabit most of the time and see them in their, their natural habitat and get a chance to interact and understand how they're going about solving the problems that they want you as an investor to help fund them to solve. Mm -hmm. I think that would do a lot to increase investors' confidence in what these startups are really all about and it would make for a much more organic interaction style, and therefore, I think, a smoother path to negotiating terms that are acceptable to both sides.
Uh, and in Korea right now, is there much interaction between the angel groups and the incubators sure, and accelerators? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, uh, in, in Korea, also there is uh, many incubators and accelerators working on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they originally, uh, some of them are originally from the angel investors, and uh, some of them is uh, 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 tied with some kind of companies. And, and in Korea, there is a uh, corporate, co corporate venture capital is now, nowadays, uh, uh, doing a lot of things together with uh, angel investors. Mm -hmm. So maybe not just for the you know, each angel investor, but the accelerator program. Uh, they can connect with uh, many CVCs in, in Korea. Uh, they, they actually provide uh, you know, uh, BIs, uh, BIs and uh, some, of, some of the programs BIs? on uh, <laughs> business incubator. Mm -hmm. so, and, uh, and some of the programs like uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence or blockchain kind of things or some of the vertical uh, related with the, their strategic you know, mm. uh, ecosystem on the startups. Uh, so I think that there, there, there are quite big dynamics in the uh, angel investor system, not just for the uh, you know, traditional investment, but we need to know much more and much better than yeah. before. So we've talked about a lot of different things here today. We've talked about the possible exits and the differences between Korea and Silicon Valley with mergers and IPOs. We've talked about angels getting more involved with incubators and accelerators, possibly taking vans and visited. We've talked about just the history itself of the angel community, 10 years versus 50. What else do you really think that we should talk about that we've missed so far? What, what information do you really think an entrepreneur out there should know? And then after that, give a brief wrap up of what you're currently working on. Okay. What do I think we should <clears throat> mention that we haven't pr touched on so far? Well, I love the idea of getting more mobility into the angel investors uh, to go visit the, the entrepreneurs in their native habitat. I think what you've been describing about the way Korean angels behave mm -hmm. and the way they think, get a bunch of them on a plane and bring them over here mm -hmm. and let's 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 match up a dozen yeah, Korean yeah, entrepreneurs yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. a dozen a couple dozen um, angel investors over here and trade ideas and experiences yeah, and see right. how well they do I think I think these communities are very secular they don't mm. reach out beyond their local area I mean Kairetsu is a good example though they've got worldwide networks and they mm. do syndicate their deals around the world right. that's a really solid foundation for people in I don't know in uh. Istanbul to know what's going on in San Francisco or Munich or wherever, and there's there's really no substitute for that kind of first-hand information about deal flow that they could get involved in. So they've done a great job building that network. Um, I'd like to see, but again, this idea of a global network of entrepreneurs and I mean of angel investors would be a great thing to see emerge. And if Paul, if you want anyone to contact you or find out any more information what you're working on. What's the best way to reach you or find out? Well, the best way is to either come to the vault uh, at 415 Jackson Street in San Francisco, one block from the Transamerica Tower. You can reach me at my email, paul at thevault.co, and uh, be happy to talk to anybody with any questions about programs. Um, and let me see what we're working on just quickly. Today I was on the phone with Jamaica, Serbia, and the Philippines about doing angel investor training in those countries. And JJ, what's the best way to reach you? Okay, so I also have a Twitter account, to said at High concept, H I C O N C P, uh, because I'm also uh, so looking around the world very, uh, you know, frequently. So that that is the best way to contact me. And also, you can find out the, my LinkedIn uh, profile at Sihun Dat Chang. Yes, yeah, so you, you can find out very uh, easily. Uh, so so, but that will be the best contact with me. JJ Paul, thank you guys for being on Silicon Valley Successes, and stay tuned for our next guest, Brian Liu, who is the founder of Zendor. Thank you from all of us at Silicon Valley Successes. We hope you found the information presented today useful in your path to success. For further information on accessing the resources in Silicon Valley, you may visit us on the web at siliconvalleysuccesses.com, on Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you. And remember, we want to help you in your journey to become the next. Six